In our last lesson, we talked about Article 30 of the Civil Code. We learned that Article 30 applies when the injured party opts to file a civil action rather than pursue a criminal prosecution. When that happens, kapatid, the quantum of proof required is mere preponderance of evidence. We learned that it can be made expressly or impliedly. We also learned about the effects of the death of the accused on the criminal prosecution. The death of the accused extinguishes his criminal liability but his civil liability may persist depending on the stage of the prosecution at the time of his or her death. In today's lesson, we're going to take a look at Article 31 of the Civil Code. It's a very short provision but it opens up a lot of new concepts that we can learn together. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to number 1. Enumerate and define the sources of obligations under the Civil Code. 2. Identify independent civil actions and how these claims are made. 3. Explain how a single act or omission can give rise to multiple causes of action. All of this and more coming right up! Hi, my name is Lex and welcome to Lex in Motion. In this channel, I'll be helping you build your competence, confidence, and capability in law school. Start today by hitting the subscribe button below. New episodes are posted every Friday. Article 31 of the Civil Code provides that when the civil action is based on an obligation not arising from the act or omission complained of as a felony, such civil action may proceed independently of the criminal proceedings and regardless of the result of the latter. Again, kapatid, walang mahirap unawain sa provision na ito ng ating civil code. Hindi rin ito masyadong pinag-uusapan sa persons but you will encounter it again when you get to criminal procedure, torts and damages, and obligations and contracts. Himayin natin ang provision kapatid na dating siyang unawain. Kung ating babalikan ang ating mga naunang lesson, we know that every person who is criminally liable is also civilly liable. We also know that when a criminal criminal action is filed against the person, the civil aspect or the civil action is deemed automatically instituted. Sa Article 31, kapatid, ay pareho pa rin ang ating senaryo. Meron tayong criminal action laban sa isang tao. Ang malaking pinagkaiba, kapatid, ay ang source ng civil liability. Ayon sa Article 31, when the source of the obligation is not the act, or omission that is complained of as a crime when the duty to pay damages arises not because of the crime but arises from another source of obligation then it is called an independent civil action an independent civil action is a civil action that arises from any other source of obligation except from a crime or felony. They may be filed at any time even when there is a pending criminal prosecution. Independent civil actions exist on a parallel reality with the criminal prosecution. The acquittal or conviction of the accused in the criminal action has no bearing, no impact on the outcome of the independent civil action. However, there are two important rules that bind them. First, the quantum of evidence required in independent civil action is mere preponderance of evidence. Second, the injured party cannot in any way, shape, or form recover twice the damages. He or she cannot recover damages in the criminal case and at the same time from the independent civil action. Kung yan at yan lang ang maaalala mo mula sa ating lesson ngayon kapatid ay tuwang-tuwa na ako. Kung ikaw ay nagmamadali dahil gahol ka na sa oras sa review, you can stop here. However, there are some important concepts that I want to share with you. These are the things that you will later on learn in other courses and I want to give you a head start by teaching them to you now. Article 31 of the Civil Code mentions an obligation. What? is an obligation. Somewhere in the internet, there is a video of me teaching obligations and contracts. This is the first lesson in that series. I cannot tell you where dahil hindi kami nagkasundo ng platform. Shoutout syempre sa mga nakahanap na nito at salamat din sa panonood nito. What is an obligation? Article 1156 of the Civil Code provides that an obligation is a juridical necessity to give, to do, or not to do. There are a lot of big words in that definition, kapatid, and let's break that down. Obligations are easy to spot through words and phrases like I promise to, or I bind myself to, or simply future tense, I will give you. Let's take a look at a few examples of obligations. Number one, I promise to give you 10,000 
thousand pesos on Christmas Day, 2021. Two, I promise to give you a cat or a dog on your birthday. Three, I will give you one hundred fifty pesos for washing my car. All of these sentences imply an obligation. There is an imposition, a duty on one person. Dito sa mga halimbawang ito, ako ay nangangako, ako ang magbibigay. That duty on my part is giving you money or a cat or a dog. But the law is clear. An obligation can be about giving, doing, or not doing. Under the old Roman law, when a person binds himself to do something, there is an imposition of a duty upon that person. If that person fails to perform the obligation, then by the sheer force and effect of law, that person is literally tied. He is literally bound. The debtor, ang taong nangungutang, is bound in chains. Literal siyang tinatalian and sold off to slavery to satisfy his debt or obligation. Or he can even be chopped up into pieces. Jose Maria Manresa, I Navarro, or simply Manresa, ay ang itinuturing na isa sa mga OG pagdating sa ating civil code. Mababasa mo ang pangalan niya sa inyong mga textbook kapatid at ilang mga kaso ng Supreme Court. In one of his commentaries on the Spanish Civil Code and by extension our Civil Code, he says that codes should as a matter of policy refrain from defining. He says that definitions should be left to judges, justices, treatises, and to schools. The second criticism to the definition under Article 1156 of the Civil Code is that it is inadequate. No una ko ring mabasa ang definition ay hindi ko rin naintindihan. Kulang na kulang siya. Sa definition lang na inilatag ng Article 1156, kapatid, hindi natin malalaman kung sino ang mga kasali sa isang obligation. Hindi rin natin alam ano ang mangyayari kung merong hindi tumapad sa isang obligation. That is why Manresa offers his definition. An obligation is a legal relation between one person, the creditor, and another, the debtor, in which the latter is bound to comply with a prestation, which the former has a right to demand from him. The good thing about Manresa's definition is that he defines an obligation as a legal relationship between two persons, ang taong nangungutang, ang debtor, at ang taong nagpapautang o creditor. Further, Manresa points to the effects of this relationship. The debtor must comply with the prestation and the creditor has a right to demand from the debtor. The definition of Manresa is good but the better definition and I think the one that is the most complete is from Justice Jose Benedicto Luna Reyes or Justice JBL Reyes for short. His definition borrowed from another Spanish commentator, Jose Arias Ramos. They say that an obligation is a juridical relation whereby a person called the creditor may demand from another called the debtor the observance of determinate conduct and in case of breach may obtain satisfaction from the assets of the latter. This definition by Justice JBL Reyes gives us the same two persons, a creditor and a debtor. The debtor is bound to observe a determinate conduct. Yan ang prestation na binabanggit ni Manresa. In case there is failure to do so, the creditor may obtain satisfaction from the assets of the debtor. Notice kapatid that the law says he may, pero hindi sinabing he will or he shall obtain satisfaction. This is because in obligations and contracts, there are several remedies in case of breach of obligations. Hindi ibig sabihin ay magkakaagawan na lang tayo ng ari-arian para lang mabayaran. From these definitions of an obligation, we know that there are two parties to an obligation and that there is a conduct or prestation that must be performed. This conduct can mean something to give, to do, or not to do. And at the very core of an obligation, there is a bond, a tie, a connection that brings these two parties together. Article 1157 of the Civil Code provides that obligations arise from number one, law, two, contracts, three, quasi-contracts, four, acts or omissions punished by law, and five, quasi-delics. According to the man, the myth, and the living legend, Professor Ruben Balane says that the law is the ultimate source of obligation. He says that without the law, the other sources of obligation might not exist. It is the law, Article 1157 of the Civil Code, to be exact, that tells us the sources of these obligations. Let's look at a more concrete example here, kapatid. 
Halimbawa ay ang minimum wage. Ang ating labor laws ay nagdidikta ng minimum na sahod na dapat ibigay sa isang empleyado. Hindi ito pwedeng bumaba dito pero pwedeng-pwedeng tumaas. There are two parties to this obligation. The employer, si boss, amo o master at ang kanyang tauhan, ang empleyado. One of the parties is given a prestation or a conduct. This conduct is to give and the object of the prestation is the minimum wage or the lowest possible sweldo. For any person in a given industry or sector for a given region, the source of this obligation is our labor law. Articles 194 and 195 of the Family Code impose an obligation to parents to support their children. The parties in this obligation, kapatid, ay ang mga magulang at ang kanilang mga anak. Ano ang prestation dito or the conduct that's required? The prestation here is to give and render support. What is the object of this prestation? The object would be sustenance or food, shelter, clothing, expenses for education, among others. Another source of obligation is contracts. Article 1305 of the Civil Code provides that a contract is a meeting of the minds between two persons whereby one binds himself with respect to the other to give something or to render some service. The word contract comes from the Latin phrase cum trahere which means to draw together. Hatakin palapit sa isa't isa. To bind together. A contract is another source of obligation. Sa maghapon kapatid ay sumasa ilalim tayo sa iba't ibang kontrata pero hindi na siguro natin ito napapansin. Sa pagbilili mo ng iyong kape sa umaga sa iyong pagkakarga ng gasolina ay ikaw ay pumapasok sa isang contract of sale. Starbucks, coffee bean or wherever you get your morning coffee binds itself to give you the coffee you want to your utmost satisfaction. In return, you bind yourself to give to the barista a particular amount of money in exchange for the coffee. Sa iyong pagkakarga ng gasolina, ikaw din ay pumapasok sa contract of sale na ang unleaded gasoline na kinakarga sa kotse mo ay pumasok sa health and safety standards ng ating pamahalaan at tama ang sukat o volume na ikinarga at wala itong daya. In return, magbabayad ka ngayon gamit ang cash dahil happy sweldo kapatid o ang iyong credit card. Here you have another contract with the credit card company. The company pays the merchant for and your behalf. You also have the obligation to pay for whatever is charged on this credit card plus whatever exorbitant charges they may impose. Para naman sa amin na mga slap soil, meron tayong contract of sale. Sa tuwing tayo ay tatambay sa ating suking tindahan para bumili ng candy, cobra o yosi. Ang sari-sari store ay magbibigay sa atin ng candy, ng malamig na cobra at sigarilyo at tayo naman ay magbabayad para dito. Sa tuwing tayo ay sasakay ng LRT, bus or jeepney, we are entering into a contract of carriage. The operator of the bus, jeepney, or the LRTA have the unconditional obligation to transport us to carry us from point A. Halimbawa ay mula sa Santolan Station, mula sa Doroteo Jose, o mula sa isang bus terminal sa Araneta, Cubao, at dadalhin tayo sa ating destination. For this service, we are supposed to pay a certain amount of money, our fare o ang ating pamasahe. Sa ating pamamasukan bilang mga empleyado, we are also entering into a contract with our employers. Depending on the negotiation of the contract of employment, we bind ourselves to render this service, these duties, and perform our responsibilities to the best of our abilities. In return, the company must supply us with the tools we need to perform our duties, to meet the minimum benefits required by law, and to pay us according to the terms of our contracts. Another source of obligation is a quasi-contract. A quasi-contract is a juridical relation similar to a contract which arises from certain lawful, voluntary, and unilateral acts with the objective of preventing unjust enrichment or benefit at the expense of another. Sa isang contract, kapatid, the basis is the consent of both parties. Isasakay tayo ng jeep papuntang welcome rotunda. Dahil gusto nating sumakay at gusto rin tayong isakay ni Manong Choper. Walang pilitan dito dahil kung pinilit kang sumakay ng jeep, ay kidnapan na ito. Sa contract of sale, binebentahan tayo ng pansit kanton at titlog dahil gusto nating bumili at kumain ng pansit kanton with egg. Gusto rin syempre ni ate from the Sari Sari store na bentahan tayo nito. 
kahit na abala pa ang kanyang pagtitiktok. The basis here is consent at walang pilitan dito. In quasi-contracts, the basis of the contract is not consent or mutual agreement. It is only a unilateral act. One way lang ang obligation dito. Sa contracts, mahalaga na ginusto ng dalawang partido na pumasok sa contract. Sa quasi-contract, hindi ito importante. Ang tanging batayan lamang ay ang batas na nagsasabing bawal ang unjust enrichment. Kung bago sa iyong pandinig kapatid ang unjust enrichment, there is a separate discussion on unjust enrichment and I'll be leaving a link to that in the description down below. Kalatang mga kuisay contract sa ating civil code but I want to draw your attention to two of the most prominent ones. We have negosyorum gesture and solusyo in debiti. Negosyorum gesture happens when a person voluntarily takes charge of an agency or management of another's abandoned or neglected business or property without the owner's authority. Halimbawa kapatid ay kunwari nagkaroon ng encounter ang ating military at ang mga NPA sa barangay Hitapian sa Samar. Sa pag-evacuate ng mga tao ay naiwan ang kanilang mga ari-arian dahil sa bigla ang paglikas. Ngayon si X ay isang farmer at isa siya sa mga unang bumalik doon sa kanilang farm. Naisalba niya ang kanyang mga pananim na gulay at prutas. Nakita rin niya na ang mga pananim ng kanyang kapitbahay ay malapit ng mahinog at kung patatagalin pa ay ay baka masira lang. Sa kanyang kabutihan ng loob, inani ni X ang mga tanim na upo at pinya ni Y. Ibinenta niya ang mga ito kasabay ng kanyang mga ani. Binukod niya ang kanyang kinita sa pera na dapat ay mapunta kay Y. In this scenario, we have negosyorum gesture. X is the officious manager. He voluntarily harvested in Y's farm and sold the goods rather than risk a complete loss on the part of Y who has abandoned his farm and has failed to return. X now has the obligation to return the proceeds of the sale of the fruits and vegetables of Y under the principle that no man or woman should enrich his or herself at the expense of another person. Again, I am oversimplifying, kapatid. There are other duties and obligations imposed upon the officious manager o ang taong nagmagandang loob na tumulong. Mas classic na halimbawa dito ay yung fish pond problem, kapatid. At mababasa mo rin yan when you get to obligations and contracts. For now, what you need to remember about negosyorum gesture is that the abandonment must be very, very clear. Another example would be solution in debity. Solution in debity is a juridical relation that arises when something is received when there is no right to demand it and it was unduly delivered through mistake. Classic na halimbawa dito ay ang senaryo kung saan si A bumili ng isang sakong bigas mula sa tindahan ni B. Ang halaga ng bigas ay 1,350 pesos. Nagbayad si A ng isang pirasong 1,000 peso bill at isang 500 peso bill. Dapat ang kanyang sukli ay wait for it 150 pesos lang. However, B, sa kanyang pagmamadali na isakay na ang bigas sa kotse ni A dahil malapit na siyang magsara o baka bumuhos na ang malakas na ulan, ay nagbigay siya ng sukli kay A na nagkakahalagang 650 pesos. Akala kasi ni B ay ang binayad ni A ay dalawang pirasong 1,000 peso bills. A in this scenario has no right to demand 650 pesos. At best, he is only entitled to 150 pesos. The payment made by B was made by mistake. Now the law provides that A must return the excess. Kailangan isoli ang sobrang sukli under solution in debity. Based on the principle that no man or woman should unjustly enrich his or herself at the expense of another. The fourth source of obligations are the acts or omissions punished by law. Again, the last few lessons have been dedicated on this principle. Say it with me, kapatid. Every person criminally liable is also civilly liable. The basis is that behind every crime, the accused injures not only the people of the Philippines but the private offended party. Kailangang pagbayaran ng krimen hindi lamang sa estado kundi doon din sa naging biktima ng krimen. Damages are there to somewhat make the person whole again. 
Finally, we have quasi-delics. Article 2176 of the Civil Code tells us that whoever by act or omission causes damage to another, there being fault or negligence, is obliged to pay for the damage done. Such fault or negligence, if there is no pre-existing contractual relation between the parties, is called a quasi-delict and is governed by the provisions of this chapter. A quasi delicate is not a crime. However, it attaches civil liability upon any person who causes damage. Hindi importante dito kung ang damage ay ginawa sa person o sa property. All that the law requires is that there is damage to another. That such damage was caused by the fault or negligence. And that person who causes the injury has to pay for the damage done. Napakalapat kapatid ng nasasakupan ng quasi delic It is also a very broad subject such that it used to occupy three units noong kapanahunan namin sa law school. A quasi delic attempts to bridge the gap between crimes or delics and damages arising from contracts. It is an independent source of obligation and it's also part of the reason why we have independent civil actions. The best way for us to understand this, kapatid, is by discussing the classic law school problem. Kapag ito, kapatid, ay nasagot mo sa law school, ay hahangaan ka ng iyong professor. So please listen carefully. Medyo may konting variation lang ang facts dito, pero the gist is the same. Patricia was the passenger of the BLTD bus driven by Danilo. The bus was traveling from Allen Northern Summer and bound to Manila. They passed by the Bitukang Manok Road in Antimonan, Quezon Province. Danilo had just taken over the shift and was visibly drunk when he took the wheel. Also traveling the same road but on the opposite direction, meaning pa south sila, was a passenger jeepney driven by Jasper. On board this jeepney were the spouses Bueno who were also traveling with their dog Batik. When the two vehicles passed each other on Bitukang Manok Road, the passenger bus sideswiped the jeepney. Danilo lost control of the bus and collided against a parked vehicle on the side of the road. Jasper was also unable to regain control of the jeep and it rolled off the cliff, landing on a house owned by Eduardo. As a result of the accident, Patricia was injured and completely lost all sensation from the waist down. The spouses Bueno died but Batik survived. Eduardo lost his house but he managed to survive. If you were the lawyer for Patricia, what are the legal remedies available to you? If you were the lawyer for the family of the spouses Bueno or for Batik, discuss all of the legal options available for your client who is liable to Eduardo and for the destruction of his house. Post this video muna kapatid and try to figure out your answer. Ang clue mo dito ay sources of obligation. Patricia here has the option of filing a criminal case for reckless imprudence resulting to serious physical injuries against the driver of the bus, Danilo. Danilo was drunk at the time of the accident and he must be held liable, therefore. The quantum of proof required is proof beyond reasonable doubt. If the driver cannot pay for the damages, then the bus company must step in to be held accountable for the damages. In the alternative, Patricia can also file an action for breach of contract of carriage. When she bought a ticket and boarded the bus, the operator of the bus had an unconditional obligation to transport Patricia from Allen Northern Samar all the way to Araneta, Cubao, Quezon City. The quantum of proof required is mere preponderance of evidence because the breach of the contract of carriage is only a civil case. Finally, at dito kadalasang nagkukulang ang mga sagot, Patricia can also file a civil action for damages under Article 2176 or quasi-delict under our civil code. The law provides that whoever causes damage, there being fault or negligence, is obliged to pay for the damage done. The existence of the contract of carriage between Patricia and BLTD Bus Company is not a bar for recovery because the same negligent act that breaks the contract is also a tort. This case should be filed against the driver and the operator of the bus. The quantum of proof required is mere preponderance of evidence. 
What we can see here, kapatid, is that there is a single act. Lasing si Manong Driver at nagkaroon sila ng aksidente. Pero ang isang aksidente ay maaaring manganak ng tatlong kaso. Dito na kapatid pumapasok ang independent civil actions. These are civil cases for damages and they are based on any source of obligation except that of delicts. They proceed independently from the criminal prosecution. They exist in a parallel reality and whatever happens in the criminal case has no bearing, no impact on independent civil actions. They are only bound by the primordial consideration that the injured party cannot recover twice the damages for the same act or omission. Hindi pwedeng pagkakitaan ang pagiging biktima ng isang krimen o aksidente. Elsewhere in the civil code, and these will be covered in the succeeding lessons, these are the independent civil actions. Number 1, Article 32 or the breach of constitutional and other rights. 2, Article 33 which broadly speaking covers defamation, fraud or physical injuries. 3, Article 34 or the refusal or failure of city or municipal police officers to give protection. 4. Article 2176 or Quasi Delix or Culpa Aquiliana. We will discuss these provisions in later episodes, kapatid, but for now, I want you to remember that in the case of Patricia, the independent civil action she can file is not based on Article 33, but under Article 2176 of the Civil Code, which lays down for us the requisites of a quasi delict. No reservation is required for independent civil actions precisely because they are independent. They can be filed before or after or even during the pendency of the criminal prosecution. Ganyan sila kalakas as a procedural device. Going back to our problem earlier, the answer for the family of the spouses, Bueno and Batik, are essentially the same. They can file a criminal case against the driver of the jeepney for reckless imprudence resulting to homicide. They can also proceed against the operator of the jeepney for breach of contract of carriage. The big difference, kapatid, is that the family can also file an independent civil action and the basis this time is our Article 33 of the Civil Code. I encourage you to read ahead, kapatid, pero I will explain this later when we get to Article 33. The only limitation is that the family and batik cannot recover damages in both the criminal prosecution and in the civil case of breach of contract of carriage or independent civil action. For Eduardo, he can sue both drivers for reckless imprudence resulting to damage to property under Article 346 of the Revised Penal Code. He also has the option to sue the operators of both vehicles for torts under Article 2176 of the Civil Code. Siguro kapatid ay nagtataka ka kung bakit both operators pero yung jeep lang naman ang bumagsak sa kanila. The reason kapatid is that the facts are not enough to tell us who caused the accident in the first place or who is the proximate cause of the loss. Again, that's a topic for torts and damages. Dahil hindi pasahero si Eduardo ng dalawang sasakyan, wala siyang cause of action or reason to come to court on the basis of breach of contract of carriage. He also cannot recover twice once in the criminal case and another for torts. To summarize tonight's lesson number one, obligations arise from law, contracts, quasi-contracts, delicts, and quasi-delicts. Two, independent civil actions are distinct and separate from criminal prosecution and they are bound only by the prohibition on double recovery. Three, a single act or omission can give rise to multiple causes of action based on different sources of obligations. I think we can stop here, kapatid. Alam ko na masyadong overwhelming at this point. Pero dahil maraming mga topics na sumasa nga mula sa simpleng provision ng Article 31. This was the way I learned the law many, many years ago. And I have discussed my process of learning the law in much, much greater detail in the book Dekada, 10 Life Lessons from 10 Years in Law School. Every purchase of this book will support our mission of bringing the law to the people and more people. People to the law. Our mission of helping raise an entire generation of God-fearing lawyers who can bring justice where there is none. If you get a copy today while it's on pre-order, you'll be getting it at a huge discount, and you can get a chance to win a one-on-one coaching session with me. Pagtulungan natin kapatid ang mga bagay-bagay na hindi mo na iintindihan. You can order your copy through the link in the description down below. 
Also, kapatid, there is a quiz that will help test how much you actually understood and remember from our discussion. Huwag kang mahihiyang mag-post ng score mo dahil proud na proud kaya ako kapag may nakikita kong improvement. If you would like us to continue with our discussion on Intro to Persons, please show me your support by typing yes in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Like and share this video for Good Law School Carmine. I will see you next Friday.